Welcome everyone. We are so excited to have you joining us today. My name is Laura Beck and I am with Voyagers Conservancy, the official nonprofit partner of Voyagers National Park. We are thrilled to be co-presenting with our park partner for this month's Notes from the North Woods, which is part of Voyagers first star party. To learn more about this week's events and programming, click the link in the description. Before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to introduce the Conservancy. We are the official nonprofit partner of Voyagers National Park. Many parks have nonprofit or friends groups that help them see beyond their limited budgets. In our partnership with Voyagers National Park, we help fund and manage projects and programs that the National Park Service could not complete on their own. We have facilitated youth crews who do conservation projects in the park, collaborated on community recreation events, hosted a yearly photo contest, which is open now until September 27th, and have so many more plans for this year and beyond. Voyagers Conservancy is a community of stewards who support the park with their time and resources for projects that sustain the park. If you are already part of or would like to join the Voyagers community, we would love to keep in touch. If you want to sign up for our e-newsletter, visit voyagers.org and follow the park and the Conservancy on social media. With that, I am thrilled to turn it over to Ranger Mariah, who will help us explore Voyager's Northern Lights through art. Welcome, we are going to paint the Aurora today in celebration of Voyager's National Park becoming an international dark sky park. Uh, we are going to enjoy the various colors that uh, the nighttime has to offer today. So I made Ranger Mariah. Uh, I got my start in the park service being an artist in residence, and now I'm an interpretive park ranger out at Rainy Lake. So I'm really excited to be painting with you today. Um, and we're gonna kind of be walking through maybe the different stages of painting. And Aurora, we're going to paint this image right here, um, which is by Marsha Schuff. Um, so it's a Voyager's Conservancy photo uh, of Cranberry Creek right down the way from Rainy Lake. Uh, so we're gonna be painting that and learning a little bit about the process of why the auroras are here, why they're visible. Um, and we can see them at Voyagers. So if you wanna join along, feel free. I'll kind of run through the materials that I have. Uh, so if you'd like to join, um, what you'll need is a piece of paper or canvas. This is my paper. I've already primed it with a red background. Uh, so that'll kind of make the greens that we're about to paint a little bit richer and kind of ignite them like the atoms that are ignited um, to form <laughs> uh, the northern lights with the Aurora Borealis. I've also got a little paint palette here um, with just some basic primary colors. Um, so I've got uh, white blue, yellow, red, some greens if you want. And then I'll also, I usually don't paint with black, but we can add a little bit of black um, just to kind of get those foreground and middle ground um, land formations in there. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of black here, you know, just a dot, not a lot. You can always add more. I've also got some water here. So you can just fill up a little jar full of water. I've got some paint brushes, different sizes. We're gonna start out big and kind of work our way down to the details, smaller. And then I also have a rag for kind of wiping things. And I'm going to put my smock on so I don't get my uniform all painty. Um, so you can kind of wear some clothes that you don't mind getting painted because um, I like to get a little messy um, when I'm painting, get into the throes of creativity. Awesome. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Oh, and also if you want a pencil too, I like to kind of sketch out uh, what I'm drawing first. Uh, so before we get started, um, I just wanted to explain 
the aurora borealis. So the northern lights is what they're commonly known as. And we're going to paint them today. Um, aurora means sunrise and borealis means to the north. So it's kind of this phenomenon that happens in the northern hemisphere. We're right up against the boreal forest here in Voyagers National Park. Um, so that's why we get a good chance to sometimes see the aurora. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, sketching in. So if you take out your pencil, um, I'm using this as a reference photo. Um, and I'm just going to draw in the horizon line. So we've kind of got this horizon line here. Most likely that's the Cabotogama Peninsula. Uh, beautiful photo by Marsha Short. So I'm going to draw in. It might be a little difficult to see on this red color, but just draw that nice in. And a good rule of thumb for painting is to use the law of thirds. So you don't want to draw your horizon line right in the middle because that makes your painting a little bit more stagnant. You want to add some variation to it. Plus, we have so much sky that we want to paint. So maybe I'll even put the horizon line down a little bit lower. The great thing about painting is that you can just paint right over it. So I got that. Um, and then I have this horizon line. So I like to draw things that are farthest in the distance first and then kind of work my way to the foreground. So I can kind of draw in these trees, just kind of be nice and gestural with it. And then we're gonna draw this island there. So just kind of throw in the shapes. But let's just dive into the colors. I'm really excited to get going with those colors. Okay, so I'm going to start with a larger brush here um, and just wet it a little bit. Uh, and usually when painting landscapes, I like to start with my darker colors first and the things that are in the background first. So we kind of have this bluish teal dark color. So I'm going to use some greens and some blues to maybe mix that bluish color. Awesome. So it's a little bit dark, but we're just going to dive on in. Going to add that color to the base. Maybe get a little bit of water and kind of work my way up to the top. Just layer, layer, layer. That is the goal. So the uh, souls or the aurora borealis is something that most of the time you can see in the winter. You need three things in order to see the aurora borealis. It's um, solar flares from the sun that can be predicted about uh, 27 days in advance. Um, so solar flares, clear skies, um, and darkness. So that's why it's hard to see in the summertime because we only have about four to five hours of pure darkness, plus all the smoke that we've been having recently can sometimes add like this sheer um, layer to viewing our night skies. We've been having about um, KP scale fours recently being our peak. Uh, so hopefully, you know, as the fall kind of comes around, we'll be able to get higher and higher numbers um, up until nine, the KP scale goes to. Uh, awesome. Okay, so I'm going to just keep adding these colors in. So just, I like to mix kind of on the canvas and on my palette. Um, so just kind of, this is your time to kind of go for it. And we're going to add those details later. So I'm starting to add those bright green colors. I'm going to add some coloration and notice how the, uh, the swoops of my brush are kind of mimicking the patterns and the, those ribbons, those dancing moving ribbons um, up above. And the cool thing about this is that we are painting a moving alive thing, right? We're interpreting not only um, a 3D world, but we're interpreting kind of this 4D like movement and things are in motion, right? We're almost trying to paint a video. Um, so we want 
we want those passionate brush strokes. We want that motion so we can kind of see this ribbon dancing across the sky. Cool, so as I go up, I'm just going to add more and more yellow, maybe even a little bit of white. Do, do, do. Yeah, we actually have um, a KP scale four coming up on the 10th of uh, August in 2021. Um, so maybe we'll be able to see something um, somewhat soon, uh, but most likely September, October, November. That's kind of when those bright colors come in. Okay, so again, I'm just adding kind of those larger swaths of color. And kind of mixing the wet paint on the canvas, which I always really enjoy. I noticed too, so I'm kind of using the brush strokes to go this way, but the light also goes up and down too. So that's maybe some a texture that we'll come back to later. But it's just fun to notice all the subtleties around. So right now I'm painting mostly green. So green is usually what people think of when they think of the northern lights. Um, green is when atoms struck. Uh, the atoms from the solar flares on the sun, when they're striking the atoms um, beneath the Earth's magnetosphere. Whoa, big words. <laughs> um, when those atoms are oxygen atoms. Um, uh, that's what creates that green color. And that happens, um, you can kind of see altitude with this little chart here. So that happens about 150 mi miles. Um, up in altitude. So that's, I mean, it's hard for scale, um, but it happens way above, you know, even the ozone layer or, you know, way beyond Mount Everest or anything like that. These particles and atoms are colliding and crushing um, and kind of dancing around to put on a show for us. So that's what that green color comes from. Uh, and then beyond it, we have that red color. So that's another color uh, that is kind of unique to the Aurora Borealis. Um, red also comes from oxygen, but it's just usually a little bit higher up um, in the atmosphere. So we can add maybe some of that purplish red color. So I'm probably gonna take some blue and some reds and just kind of paint those in. As best as I can. And reds and greens are actually uh, complementary colors. So when you mix them together, they turn into a neutral color as you can kind of see. So it might get a little bit tricky, but we're gonna do the best that we can. Okay. Mm -hmm. We can add a darker swath later too. All right. Awesome. So we can kind of go to below the horizon line right now if you want to. I'm going to go ahead and add in the water and then we can add all the land on top of it. And what's so unique about Voyagers National Park is we're not only seeing the northern lights in the sky, we're seeing them reflected in the, you know, 40% of our park is water. So you can see it almost double the northern lights, which is really quite a treat. Um, so we get to paint those a little bit. And you can see um, the water seems to be moving a little bit in this photograph, in Marsha's photograph. Um, so we can, uh, it's mostly green, right? We've got kind of that green color, but it is almost cropped off before the reds form in. So we'll stick to green for that color. Still using the big brush here. Um, it's kind of a dark-ish green, right? Do, do, do. So we'll add that on in. This is kind of when you want to, you can kind of try to make that line just a little bit straighter. We go gestural big motions 
um, and kind of hone in on the details throughout the painting process. Okay. So that is kind of what we got. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to add those highlights. Maybe even a little white too. So I'm kind of going back and forth to mimic the ripples that the water might be creating. And it's kind of snuck back here too. So I'm going to add a little bit there. Just be loosey-goosey with it right now. No pressure. Okay. We are doing important work as artists right now to protect the night sky. Um, artists have kind of duties uh, to preserve kind of these beautiful fleeting moments that we get the opportunity to see at Voyagers. So now that we're an international dark sky park, you can kind of contribute to that stewardship um, of uh, leaving this park better than you found it. You can capture this moment in time by creating paintings or works um, of art uh, in order to share with others, share the importance of a beautiful dark night sky um, for not only our human health, but also animals health uh, and different cultural heritages that are preserved um, by stories of the night sky. So thanks for doing your part, woo. Okay, let's see what we got. It's looking pretty good. I might transition down to like one, uh, a smaller brush now. So I got a little bit smaller brush. Mm, let me switch to this one, this one. And then I'm just, as things are a little bit wet, I'm just gonna kind of go in and soften that out. It's a little bit streaky now, which you might like too. I want to highlight that this is my painting process as I'm a landscape painter, but if you feel inspired in any way um, to create art differently, then definitely feel empowered to do so. I'm just sharing with you my process, but I want you to you know, take your own creative liberties to create the work that you want to create. Okay. Things are looking good. Awesome. Okay, that's looking good. I think that's like a good base for us. All right, so as we're waiting for things to dry, we can go back to um, the dancing ribbons of light that we have here, but I just wanted to um, show, explain the process a little bit more of what's happening um, when we see uh, the, um, the aurora borealis. So we've got the sun over here hanging out and the sun is constantly in motion. It's doing these things, it's kind of busting out, you can say. Um, so it's releasing these solar flares every once in a while and those gotta go somewhere, right? So they shoot boom, towards us on earth, right? and they can kind of scoot in. Um, we've got the magnetosphere that I described a little bit earlier, kind of going off either edge of the earth, but there are places where it can kind of scoot in on the um, North Pole, kind of where we are, that's where we're seeing, and also the South Pole. So if you venture down to Antarctica, you could also see um, those Southern lights, not the Northern lights, but the Southern ones. Um, so that's, they're kind of scooting in, um, and all of those electrons are hitting the air molecules. Boop, 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 boop. Um, it says they're excited. They're super excited because they are turning into this beautiful show for us. Um, and that's kind of how we see the northern light. Um, so that's uh, the, the reason those molecules, as they're excited, they give off a light. 
um, depending on kind of which atoms they interact with, like I mentioned. Um, so blue and purple, so we're also seeing some purples up here. Um, those are usually uh, nitrogen atoms. Um, so that's a cool thing. Mostly oxygen and nitrogen atoms are kind of what's causing the dancing a little bit. Um, but yeah, there's lots to learn. <laughs> okay, so now we can kind of go back in and start um, honing in on a little bit more of the details that we have going on. All right, so I'm going to kind of try to form this this like darker green color right above the teal. Um, and this could even be a little bit lighter. So I might go in and make it a little lighter for us. It's all about the layers, like ogres and onions. Oh yeah, okay. Maybe even a little bit bluer. So we kind of got this streaky. Remember, you can add water whenever you'd like. Kind of got this blue horizon. All right, now I'm going to try to get this color here. It's almost a little bit ochre like a kind of muted golden yellow color, like almost, if you squint your eyes. Let's see what this looks like. And you kind of want to apply the paint wet on wet as best you can. Acrylics dry fast. So it's sometimes hard, um, but as best you can, because that can kind of get give across that blendy um, look that is uh, specific to the aurora borealis. So kind of arching here. Okay, just adding that color on, seeing how it kind of goes up a little bit this way. So I'm changing the direction of my brush depending on the direction of the colors. I'm going to add a little bit of water and see if I can kind of streak that out a bit. Remember, you want to be looking at your source image um, a lot. That has the details to a successful painting um, that I don't have in my mind. I can sometimes think that I know what a painting looks like or what an image looks like, but the source image is, um, if you want to go for realistic, that is, or impressionist, post-impressionistic is kind of what I'm going for. <laughs> All right. I'm going to kind of tease these colors out so they kind of blend in. There aren't really too many lines in nature. It's usually hues against hues, right? Two colors up against each other. So life isn't really like a coloring book where there's black edges and you can color things in. It's just colors against colors. So I want, um, I don't want to have those harsh lines, right? At least I don't. But again, you could. Okay, how are we doing? How are we doing? Maybe take these down. You can kind of see how they streak down a little ways. Okay. Fun. Do, do, do. All right, and I might take it up as well. Take those streaks on up. Why not? Okay. All right, how's that looking? 
Not bad, not bad. Okay, let's let's add this pink swath in first because that's kind of set behind this dancing highlighter yellow ribbon, right? So let's add some richer pinks and purples. Let's add those uh, those nitrogen and oxygen atoms on in. All right, I want to make it a little bit brighter, especially down here. Ooh, that is a fun color. Okay, so I'm kind of putting it on a little bit wet and then getting my paintbrush a little wet and then kind of blending it in. All right, all right, we're getting there. All right, so then this corner is a little bit darker, right? Can add some more blues. So it's like a deep plum almost, like that. Yeah, ooh, there we go. Awesome, may add a little bit more along that top edge, ugh, these colors, it's just hard to believe that they're naturally produced, right? They're just so stunning. I've gotten the opportunity to see the Northern Lights in Alaska before, um, but not yet in Voyager, so I'm really excited for the fall to come along. But it's definitely a unique opportunity that's, you know, unforgettable. Okay, nice. We got some good colors going, don't we? Cool. I'm going to kind of deal with this little area right now. So what do we got here? We got kind of that lime green color again. So maybe we'll add a swath there. Little, little streaky. So it kind of goes like this. Up against that wet paint. We kind of blend together a little. And then we're gonna kind of shoot down. Sweet streak here. Right. So we're not painting happy little clouds today. If we were painting happy little clouds, it'd be hard to see the northern lights, right? In those clear skies. Painting happy, happy little solar flares. Yay. Okay. 
It's starting to come together. And then a little bit more yellow there. Woo, that is a bright color. Woo. Awesome. Wow. All right. So I'm going to switch down. Um, let's get that uh, foreground and uh, middle ground on in here. So we've kind of got that horizon line. So this, like I said, I don't like to uh, use black too often just because it's a pretty harsh color. And most of the times blacks aren't really blacks they're a dark blue or a navy but because we have a lot of dark colors going on here i'll allow it um but i'm probably going to mix a little bit of green and a little bit of blue and maybe some red just so it's like more dynamic of a black okay and we're gonna paint in this little horizon line here Right. And notice it gets bigger out there, so you can add some thickness. And then there's some closer trees nearby. So we can add those on. All right, so just some generalities, just some lines and shapes. Um, and then we can shape this little island here, the islands that are unique to voyagers. Scoured by the glaciers about 10,000 years ago is the last glaciation. All right, so that's just below the horizon line, right? So we can see the horizon line behind it. And then this, the shoreline goes just below it. So maybe right here. All right, something like that. And then we're just gonna shoot on up. those trunks. You can have fun with the trees. If you want to, you can go in and do every single little bitty tree, but trees are trees, um, just kind of general shapes. If you get caught up with details, which is easy to do, what I like to do is just squint your eyes and look at the general shapes. What is um, gonna kind of capture the essence of what we're looking at? You don't have to have every little twig on the tree, right? Just kind of the general shapes and see how the island kind of lumps up a little. And then down. Just keep adding those shapes. Okay. And then kind of the side to side thing. And again, we can add more details later. We're just getting the generalities. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. While we're on black, 
Um, you can water down your paint a little bit and then we can add some of those shadows. Um, so as the island is reflected on the water, that dark color is going to kind of shadow all of those greens that are reflected in the water right now. So we wanna, you know, the island's not just floating there, right? It has a shadow, it causes a presence. Um, so we're gonna add these darks on into it. And there's a lot of streaks to the water. So we can add those in as well. And then this side too. Again, as we get closer to the foreground, the details are going to become more crystal. My painter stance. Okay. All right. We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, cool. So now let's go back to the sky. It's fun. I really enjoy kind of flip flopping, doing a little of this, a little of that. Uh, so let's go back to the sky and I might switch down to an even smaller brush now. Let's see. I'm using flat edged brushes. You can also, you know, use these little nubby brushes for finer lines like that. So I might transition to a smaller brush, let's see. Okay, so I'm going to throw in that light green color and just kind of take that. I'm gonna get it super watery. Uh, it sometimes can be intimidating to put in big lines. Uh, so I usually like to start them out watery so they're more sketch-like and then you can add and build those layers as you become more confident. Okay. So they kind of start right down here. So maybe we can start with this one, which is kind of wispy behind. I think it's a little bit more yellow than I have right now. There's almost a little red to that yellow. Okay. So we can kind of swoop it. And we're just going to try to follow the lines as best we can. And it goes up, pushes up, and swoops again, add more water. like that and that's right where that kind of peak spike is can add some white to that color okay and then it kind of shoots across Mm 
and dips down a little ways and then kind of goes back up again. Okay. Awesome. So maybe I'll add, I'll add a little bit more white. The whites are fun to add to a dark background. It adds that like, whoa, pop. You can kind of bring the white, arch it on down. Just get to add those streaks in. And notice I'm kind of going up close and then standing back every once in a while. It's really easy to get very involved in your painting. And sometimes just taking a step back is that perspective that you need to kind of put things into place, what needs to be edited and all that. Okay, cool. All right. Add some more streaks up this way. It's a lot of blending. All right, so maybe I can add this little squiggle right now. I almost had a yellow already, gotta resupply. Okay, so this color. Right there, and then this one kind of has like, it's almost like a W. Look at that color. W. All right, and then it kind of blends together. Add some white. And then it's like a hazy green back there. So I might switch my brushes again to have less pointy of a brush. Maybe like that one. Just to kind of blend things together. And you see how the greens kind of go in between the blacks. You can bring them on down. You can add the details to the black later. Color and the lights up here. And see how those two connect. Okay. 
I'm just making a lot of these streaky lines to kind of blend the sky together. Okay. We are getting there. Cool, so we can let that dry for a little. Maybe I'll add a different color down below. There, now it's just kind of blendy. We have like the shapes that we want. So we just wanna make sure that the colors kind of make sense, right? So we can add. more of these like pocket colors in. Wherever you see fit. Maybe even this bright streak. artistic liberties can kind of come into place now. Maybe add some dots and dashes. Awesome. Ooh. Seeing how these colors kind of come together. How we doing, how we doing? All right, all right. So a lot of different stages, right? It's like when you're painting a, or if you're writing something, you've got your first draft, your second draft. So we're just doing all those drafts on top of each other. We try to hone in on those details. Okay, cool. It's kind of coming together. What else coming together? Maybe we can add some of these blue teals to the water down below. We kind of have that details part of the process. Again, this is just kind of a quick glimpse into a process. Um, most likely, I would take a little bit longer than an hour to paint this. Um, so I encourage you to do the same, you know, after this program, you know, continue adding those details and looking um, to what is beyond what we just painted in this one hour session here. Some water. I'm adding those dots and dashes to mimic the ripples of the water. Okay. Awesome. That 
band there. Now's the time that I start thinking about how to make the colors cohesive and everything kind of aesthetically pleasing, I guess. But again, it takes some time, so don't feel pressured that this has to be a masterpiece right now. Cool. All right, so I'm going to add some more detail. So using that tiny brush um, into the trees. So using that black, again, adding some blues, greens, reds. So it's a little bit richer of the black. And then we're gonna add in just some dots and dashes. So it's a little bit more realistic. And we'll do the same on this island here. Just kind of looking at those general shapes of the trees. It's kind of an arch to them. Cool. And if you want to, you can go in and add those little dots and dashes to those ripples up front as well. And it's also pretty dark right at the base of the tree. So we can add those streaks of dark paint on in. And do the same to this side as well. Little streaks. That turn into waves. Ripples. Okay, 
some just teensy dots. Ooh, ooh. All right, awesome. So then we are kind of getting down there in time, um, but things to focus on as um, we're honing in on those details. Um, so we kind of made the block area of the islands. So one of my favorite things to do, the last final touch is I like to take some paint and go over the black so that we add those negative spaces. There's a lot of in-betweens there that are sometimes hard um, to get originally with the black. So you can go on top of the black and add those negative spaces on it. Which is, I, I just think it's really fun. <laughs> Kind of bring those highlights out. Add those little peaks. There's a few on this side as well. And then, of course, as we get closer down to the horizon, those are going to be more blue, even a little bit of that red color. Can you see? Okay, all in those colors in. All right, it's looking pretty good, I would say. Kind of forms that arch there. To the island. Cool. And now one of the last things that you can do, again, I've got a ways to go on this painting, but just giving you some tips and tricks to get you started. Uh, we've also got stars poking through those northern lights. So we want to make sure to add those. And uh, how I like to make stars, so I'm going to need just a touch more yellow, is to kind of make a white yellow dot, like a little tiny halo almost. So we want to take a nice fine brush if you have that like a little tiny fine brush like this like this Ooh. okay so we're going to get like a nice lemon yellow color going so like that just really really light yellow and we're just going to pinpoint a few stars if you want to get flirty, you can, you know, add some constellations in there um, that are unique to the area, you know, add that north, northern star in there. Um, Cassiopeia, uh, do what you want, but I'm just going to kind of add some gestures of stars. So we got a few down here, this like little triangle. One there, one there, one there. 
And these are just little dashes. So we've kind of got just like a sprinkling of some up top. So I'm not getting too hung up on the actual constellations. But again, if you are interested in that, you should. And make sure that, you know, they go off the page. There's millions of stars out there, billions. And we go up, 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 up. And go around. I know looking kind of uniform, so maybe I'll add a few clusters. It looks like there's more concentrated over there. So we'll add a few more. So it looks less like polka dots and more like stars. And you can make them varying sizes too. Okay, so now what you could do is just do pure white. So on some of the particularly bright stars that you can see, you're going to add a dot of just pure white to the center of those lemon yellow colors. And that will just kind of make it pop. You know, these stars, um, they're like, bright lights that have this halo around there. So this is just like a technique to kind of make it even more just a dash more realistic. And you might not even notice it from this far away, but it is kind of a cool effect to whip out. All right, okay, this is coming along. I'm not quite finished yet, but those are kind of the, the name of the game starter pack to kind of getting you off the ground, um, getting you 150 miles off the ground, touching those Northern Lights here from Voyagers National Park. Remember to sign your painting when you're done. No name, no fame. Uh, and also, if you're if you come up with a product that you're really psyched on, tag us online um, uh, with a Voyagers Conservancy handle or Voyagers National Park handle. Uh, we'd love to see your work, your art in the park. Uh, I'm going to continue working on this painting, but it was really nice, kind of jumping off with all of y'all. Uh, thanks so much for joining me and embrace the night sky. Woo!